antique restorer and a furniture flipper and a contractor in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I have made multiple videos um, that you may have seen on my channel of me taking old pieces, refinishing them, or flipping them, and you know, reselling them. I use a lot of equipment in there in those videos, and it's something that would probably be more typically only accessible to a professional if you know your budget is lower then you might be looking for other options that I don't typically show you, such as, you know, my Apollo, uh, my cap spray, and some of my other air guns that work off the compressor. Um, typically, are at least five or $700, if not well into two or $3,000. So, I wanted to make a video for just the average furniture refinisher out there that wants to go get into this and do some DIY furniture and what I've got here is, I went out and bought a wagon. I had one before, whenever I first started out, I sold it. But I got the wagon Flexio 3500 here. And I'm going to see if I can get some decent results using this. And just average tools that the average person would have for refinishing furniture. So what I've got is I went to Habitat for Humanity. And I picked up a few cabinet doors. I have some more in the truck, but most of them look kind of like this. I tried to avoid oak just because that brings a new problem, grain filling and, you know, stuff that's beyond scope of this video. But what I'm going to try to do is see if I can get a factory finish on this. And if I can get a decent finish on this, then, you know, using this gun, you could probably get a good finish on just about any piece of furniture that you use. Um, obviously, it's going to have its limitations. It's only $200. 79 I think so it's not going to do everything it's not going to spray all of the finishes that a you know say an Apollo or a Titan cap spray might or even some of the air assisted pumps but you know for a budget option I want to see if I can make it work for just the average DIY so the first thing that I'm going to do with these is I'm going to clean them and then we're going to take a look at the gun I'm going to give a review of it and kind of my thoughts on, you know, how I would set it up if I was going to use it. And then I'll show me painting it and I'll show you some close ups of the finished results and you can be a judge for yourself. So I'm out of the cleaner that I normally use, but got some kind of Lysol cleaner right here. Wouldn't normally use this, would not recommend using it on cabinets or anything like that. But for the purposes of what I've got, I'm just going to go ahead and use it. I'm just going to take it, use it to clean it, wipe it off good. And then when I'm done with this, I'm going to take some water and rinse it off. Again, definitely would recommend using dish soap or goo off. I mean the goo gone um, spray, which is they have a, a free paint cleaner. the gun now. So Wagner 3500 like I said. It's pretty simple. It's got it on and off switch obviously and the air power. Now I read on the specifications for I think it was from Home Depot said that it was a HVLP and it operated at pressure like maximum 3 PSI. That can't be right. Even for PSI that sounds extremely low. So I'm going to guess that it probably tries to run more around 10 to 15 PSI with a higher volume of air. And, you know, it's just important to have a concept whenever you're using these guns. So right here you have a um, canister and a nozzle and a, you know, spray mechanism for the thicker paints. And you have one for the thinner paint right here. Um, probably going to say that most of the time I'm going to be using this one for sure. And they has a little brush inside there to take this out. Petroleum jelly. It's for 
lubricating ports on the gun. So it looks like every other Wagner that I've used pretty much, you know, really trying to make it as simple as possible. And I'll say that generally speaking with these kinds of guns, you're going to be with the full power because they do kind of lag power, a lot of them. And so, yeah, you're going to be using the full power, you know, if you wanted to get away with using thicker paints and probably getting a little bit better finish, then I would recommend the cheap airless assisted pump. But for furniture refinishing, where you're using very small amounts of paint, sometimes only just a quart or even less than that, then obviously it takes more than that to prime an airless assisted. So that's why I bought this model, even though Wagner does make a airless assisted cheap gun that I've used before and that I've owned that does a good job. But you know, for these purposes, I'm going to be using this gun because this is what somebody would probably buy who's doing a DIY furniture job. Use a Ben shellac based primer and kind of needs to be mixed up a little bit, but honestly, I don't worry about it too much, and so I'm not really concerned with the color of it for these purposes. Just getting the primer on. Um, pretty thin and with any material you use for this gun even if the paint says not to thin it you're going to have to thin it to get it to spray out of this this is not going to spray it's not going to level out as well as a high end HPLP might so you're going to have to use a very viscous material. If you can use a coating that's recommended for furniture and for wood products and cabinets and getting an ultra fine finish like Centurion Wood Coatings or Renner or Molesi, if you have any dealers or anybody that sells that local to you, I would definitely recommend using that. And I think that those are more ready to be sprayed. Whereas a lot of your latex paints and a lot of the paints that furniture refinishers tend to use will not be, such as mineral paints and chalk paints. Even after thinning, they're just, they're not made for this purpose. So. I think that's thin enough. Might add a little bit of denatured alcohol but I think that's thin enough. Take it in. Going over the one that was in not so bad shape. Quickly. I've got this setting on about four or five. You're gonna want the most air power for the least fluid pressure, and that'll give you better atomization. You want to paint it as quickly as you can and get it out of the sun. It accidentally turns it off.
So that one came out a lot better. Obviously, I'm going to want to get it out of the sun as quickly as possible. So I'm going to do that real quick. Go back now. We've got the primer on the two doors from the wagon. So I'm going to start with the one that I'm happiest with. This was, I believe it was a pine door that I sanded down. Got it pretty good. And I'm going to try to get as most the best shots of it as I can. But it is really, I'm really impressed with it, honestly. You know, for primer, unthinned, I maybe two to three minutes of adjusting settings. I am really pleased with this. Um, there's a little bit of where the grain rays right there, and there's a few little spots of orange peel on the side of it. But with the exception of that, it's a really good looking door. This would totally be acceptable in professional painting just for a first coat, you know, a primer to get it ready with. Um, the first door that I tried without adjusting any of the settings, I was really not happy with. As you can see, there's a lot of orange peel here, here, there, kind of where I tried to sand it out. And I think I'm just going to go ahead and take this out of the test. Not because of the fact that, you know, um, I'm not trying to be unrealistic in the sense that I did not adjust the settings of this at all. I just basically picked the gun up and tried to shoot this. This was the first door. After adjusting it, you know, um, I'll show you side by side, but I mean, really, you can definitely see the difference in the longer door and this other door right here. Very obviously, I mean, this looks really good for just a coat of primer. This is not any kind of special primer. It's off the wall, Home Depot, you know. So I think that as it stands now, I think that with the enamel that I'm going to use, I'll be able to get good results with this wagon. And, you know, that's definitely a good thing for anybody that's looking to get into furniture flipping for a budget. Is give them a good sanding with a worn out 220 grit for this one door that I'm going to continue with. Try to get any grit. Raise grain out of there, just like I would for anything else. Any other door that I had. Now keep in mind, because I want to do this in one day, when I do the test, I am there's going to be little fingerprint marks on it where I grabbed it at, just because of the fact that. I really would just want to get this done for today and be able to let the paint dry and look at it tonight. So what I'm probably going to do is, is I'll spray the door on the back, flip it over, and then spray it on the front. So I'll try my best to not get any marks on it, but you probably will see a little bit. But that's okay. You know, if you were doing this and you had more time on your hands, I would recommend waiting. Uh, I usually wait about half the recoat time before I flip the doors and then I'll spray the other side since I'm not really recoating it, I'm just, you know, spraying the other side. Using the smaller blue cap, smaller bottle that comes with this, it says it's only for fine finishing and stuff like that, so I figured maybe it'd be a little bit easier because I did have the gun choked quite a bit trying to get it to get a better finish with the bigger tip and the bigger bottle. So I'm going to be using Emerald's Urethane Trim Enam. And like I said in the beginning of the video, I very much recommend this more than other types of paints that most furniture refinishers are trying to use. If you're trying to get a modern look and you're trying to get the finish to lay down and to level out, these kinds of paints are made for that. Whereas a lot of the mineral paints on the market are not. And I just had a bad experience spraying them. But, you know, um, results could be different. And also these don't require a top coat. And I like that a lot about them. But they definitely need to be thinned. So right off the bat, I'm gonna start. I've got 20 ounces, but 15%. So I'm gonna get about, Three ounces. Is that water? All right, there we are. Got a little bit more than I wanted, but it's okay. Okay, so I've got the paint loaded up. Go ahead and put everything in. Do. 
test out the uh, fan pattern now. I've got the blue tip on and I've got the air power all the way up. So, um, see what the fan looks like. Yeah, that is definitely almost worse than the other one, but, you know, um, I think we want to go ahead and try it anyway, though. Spring nut on the back of that adjusted out some, and that seemed to make the fan a lot better. It does have a lot of overspray. So right off the gun, here's what it looks like. It's okay. It's definitely got some orange peel in it, but I think it'll level out. So we will see. Alright, so it's been overnight and the door has had a chance to dry. Here's a close-up of what it looks like. It's pretty good. I'm definitely happy with it. It feels smooth like it should. Um, there's a little bit of bleed through in the door right here, but that's not anything related to the sprayer. It just could have used another coat of primer. A little bit of trash for the tripod side at. Well, I mean, not tripods, the uh, the. The, yeah, the painter tripods were. But overall, it looks good. You can see the light reflecting off of it. It's got the sheen that it should have. Okay, so wrapping up this part of the video. I've got the sprayer right here. And um, a little test piece, you know, came out good. I'm happy with it. I think that it's 
largely a factor of how you use the gun and how you spray with it. I will say that I think that I'm going to go back to using this um, thing, this tip, because of the fact that it has like these numbered uh, sections on it to kind of control the spray. And I like that a lot better than I do the blue tip, which you have less control over. And also, you need to be able to get enough paint on the door for it to level out to paint correctly in any situation. Whether you're using a $1,200 gun, a $1,500 gun, a $300 gun, or a $2,000 gun. You know, the, the basic rules still apply, which is that to get a good finish, you've got to spray enough paint to where all of the particles can kind of, you know, connect and level out. And if you're not doing that, it doesn't matter what kind of gun you have, it's not going to give you good results. So, you know, painting furniture outside is something that's going to be very difficult. In the sense that, you know, whenever I was painting these doors, at the, the last time I painted it, I painted it at around 5 or 6, the sun was basically down and it was pretty cool outside. When I painted during the day, I saw that, you know, I quickly moved the drawers and the doors into the shade or indoors as quickly as possible. And that's really what you need to do because any kind of paint that you're using, if you're spraying it outside, you know, this is not going to produce a super fine finish. But if you give it time to adequately level out, the it'll make up for that and even if you have a little bit of orange peel you're going to have enough time for the paint to level out and get a good finish so you know most importantly it's you need to be able to use this correctly and you need to be using a paint that works well you know i recommend your thing trim enamel from sherman williams uh the emerald don't really like the pro classic very much but um you know, and you need to thin it. I, I thinned it by 15%. The can says not to thin it any more than that, and it says not to even thin it 15%. But, you know, even out of a good HVLP gun, like a really expensive one, you're still going to have to thin it some. So, it largely depends on your process. But, using this setup, I mean, I can get good results. I understand that I'm spraying a, a, um, a horizontal surface as opposed to vertical but I think that you know if I was spraying a um, horizontal I mean a vertical surface I could get the same finish I would just have to work a little bit harder to make sure that I don't get any runs and you notice that I put a lot of paint on this and when I do doors I put a lot of paint and you need to make sure that you know, you're putting enough to where it self levels, but also that, you know, if you're spraying a vertical surface, you don't get too much to where it runs. But you still have to put enough paint, otherwise you're going to get a rough feeling and it's going to look like, basically, it is out of the gun. So obviously, with a more expensive gun, you know, if you're using a faster drying coating, then, yeah, you know, you need something that's going to atomize it very well. That way, you know, if it dries and some chemicals and stuff like that, they dry in like 20 minutes. I mean, you know, that's not a lot of time to really level out and to, you know, have adequate time to kind of, uh, to break up some of the rough spray from the, directly out of the gun. But, I mean, this is fine. Um, probably going to keep this gun and just use it for primer. You know, it's pretty easy to clean out. I kind of like it, you know, in the sense that it's a solvent. I just put it in there and it'll be an alcohol and stuff. And I just kind of, you know, just, uh, you just take this out and then kind of rinse out the needles and stuff like that. And, you know, if I don't clean it out perfectly, I'm not going to feel that bad about it as I would if I didn't clean out a very expensive gun. So I, I like that about this that I think that I'm going to be able to use it for primers and stuff like that that are less uh, you know critical with the spraying process and 
things that I don't need to work as well in the immediate process in the sense that I'm going to sand them as soon as I spray them. So, um, yeah, I mean, this is great in my opinion. There's some things I don't really like about it. Um, for one thing, like the tips and stuff like that, you know, they're decent, but I don't like how you have to, um, how everything is plastic basically. Um, but you know, that doesn't obviously solvents over time that eventually you're going to create a problem for that. But it is what it is. It's a $179 gun and I, you get, I, I got more than what I paid for, honestly. I could probably get a lot of use out of this spraying primer and then just quickly wash it out if I don't even feel like washing it out. Just kind of, you know, very lightly clean it out. Not like a very thorough cleaning like I do with my Apollo or my cap spray. And so I'm looking forward to getting a piece of furniture in here that I can test out with this gun. And, um, you know, if you'd like to see that, we'll definitely subscribe to this. And in the future, I'll do that.